everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick Kyogre Kawai. Uh, we are here for the ABL Season 4, which I am super hyped for. Uh, Doubles Draft League is back full force on this channel. Won't be starting. Week 1 starts the beginning of August. I don't have the exact dates, but I'll make sure to keep you updated. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for updates um, and check out the ABL Twitter for updates as well. So follow me and ABL on Twitter to see all the updates about the league. Again, it's a doubles draft league for Sword and Shield with all the Pokemon, including Isle of Armor and everything available from Pokemon Home. Uh, this video is a draft analysis, so we're checking out the 12 Pokemon, not 11, that we are drafting for this season. Um, a couple other things I wanted to mention. Again, yeah, this is, uh, having 12 Pokemon is a little bit new to me. I've never drafted 12 Pokemon before. And the ABL, for the first time ever since I've been in it, is there's going to be tiers for the draft. Where previously in Season 3, when the game was brand new, there was no tiers. Uh, ABL Miners, which I was not a part of, uh, but you should go check it out. Um, they tested out the tier system for us and, uh, Obviously, it went really well because we are drafting here for this season uh, with a t with different tiers. There is a restricted tier, a Gigantamax tier, uh, an S tier, A tier, B, C, uh, and then a free pick. So you can see down on the screen, those are all laid out, and the amount that you get from each tier depends. You get more from the lower tiers. You get three from tier C, three from tier B, two from tier A, one from tier S, one from Gigantamax and one from Restricted. Restricted tier is mostly legendaries uh, and mythical Pokemon, such as Mewtwo, Zekrom, uh, stuff like that. Um, Gigantamax obviously is all the Gigantamax Pokemon, and the only time you can Dynamax is if it's a G-Max Pokemon uh, that you pick. And then again, the rest of the tiers are just ranked based on how good these Pokemon are in double battles, more like VGC, uh, rather than what you might expect to be good in single battles. Which, surprisingly, if you don't know about Pokemon, there is quite a big difference. So, with that all out of the way, if you are excited for ABL Season 4, and specifically to watch me, the Lansing Leafeons, their coach, um, if you're excited to watch uh, these battles here on this channel, be sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you are new. I think like 25% of my viewers overall aren't subscribed. Um, so, you know, if you watch my videos and you like my content, I would really appreciate a subscription, but I also appreciate you just hanging out and watching. Uh, but subscribing means that you don't miss um, misses my content. You get to see more of it. And if you hit the little bell notification, you'll be notified uh, of every video I post and when I go live here on YouTube as well. So sorry for the lengthy intro there, but I had a lot I wanted to get out of the way. Another thing is the ABL Season 4 merch is available. If you saw on my Twitter, I was rocking the Season 3 merch. Uh, so they got stickers, they got t-shirts, and I'm pretty sure a bunch of other stuff. I actually haven't even been on the website myself. But right after I film this video, I am going to check out the ABL Season 4 merch shop for my merchandise. Gotta represent. Uh, I do want to make a Lansing Leafeons t-shirt. Now that I talk about it, um, you know, in this recording, I'm, I'm saying it. I am going to make a Lansing Leafeons t-shirt uh, before the season, uh, hopefully before the season starts. I got um, the rest of this month of July to get that put together. But in the meantime, you can go check out your ABL merch um, and I'll have that linked in the description below as well as the ABL YouTube channel that you can check out for updates again as well as their Twitter all of those links for the ABL and my links down in the description below now we are for real done with the intro five minute intro but we had a lot of important stuff to talk about let's dive in to my first pick all right I lied <laughs> one last disclaimer before I talk about the draft. There was 12 coaches, so essentially it was a snake draft order with those 12 coaches, meaning we went from the top of the list down all the way to the 12th person, person who picked 12th in the first round, started off round two, sent the draft back up the list. So essentially they had to, they got to make a wheel pick where they picked twice in a row. I had arguably the worst position you can have in a draft. I was dead in the middle. So I had to wait a long time before any of my picks and it was kind of difficult to have my put my picks synergize with each other meaning they work well together because I, I picked so far apart and ev almost I got sniped so much especially during the latter half of this draft um, but right off the gate I got sniped too in the beginning 
Again, round one, I was the seventh overall pick. So just for round one, I'm gonna let you know everything that was picked before me, the six other Pokemon. So first overall pick for the entire draft was Magearna, which was interesting to me. I didn't really think about it, but Magearna is really, really good in doubles. Uh, and then overall pick number two was Eternatus, powerful legendary. Uh, Zacian, which was pretty high up on my list of, of an option I was considering. Uh, fast, really powerful fairy type. Uh, the crown forms are banned. You're not allowed to use the special item for it. Uh, next up was overall pick number four was Melmetal, which was honestly who I was going to draft round one. I was thinking you could do some cool stuff with Melmetal being a really bulky, excuse me, hiccups. It's a really bulky and really powerful steel type. Can take a lot of damage, deal a lot of damage. Uh, and I thought maybe if you get that thing uh, protected behind some screens, set up in Trick Room because it's really slow, it, it's going to be a scary threat. And it was it was honestly a steel type Pokemon I wanted to build my team around. Again, I wanted to draft Melmetal and then build my team around it with protecting its defenses with like, again, or and helping with its speed, whether that's sweet speed swap or trick room, uh, and shoring up its defensives, uh, whether that's uh, plenty of moves to boost defense from uh, ally supporting Pokemon. So I was really bummed that Melmetal got picked, and I there was only two picks after that, and then I had to go. So um, Salabgo picked up Necrozma Duskmane, and then the, the next pick was Terrakian. So it was my choice. Those had all been picked. There was, I mean, there was a lot of good Pokemon left in that tier, such as like Zekrom. I'll, I'll let you know some of the other really good ones in that restricted tier, since you can't see it. I mean, there's Celebi, Cabalion, uh, Keldeo, Jirachi was available, Kyurem, all, all of the different Kyurem forms, Black, White, and Normal, uh, Lunala, Marshadow, Mew, Mewtwo, Necrozma, uh, Necrozma, Dawn Wings. Obviously, Duskmane had just been drafted. But again, you get the gist. There was a lot of powerful legendary Pokemon left. And what I wanted, I didn't really know what I wanted. So I decided, uh, I just wanted to start my team out with something that I knew was really powerful and, and something I was interested in using. So that being said, I went ahead and drafted Mewtwo. Overall, first pick for me was Mewtwo. I was looking at this thing's stats. It's got a, a pretty decent speed tier and a really high special attack. So it's fast. You don't really have to worry about uh, patching up its speed stat, but um, could definitely benefit from um, from speed boosts if, uh, if it can get the chance to get them. Uh, so I really wanted it because of how, how fast it was. I believe it's a 130 speed stat and a really high special attack stat uh, as well to pair with that. So again, it's just powerful, it's hard hitting, uh, and it's fast, which covered all the things I wanted for my restricted tier. And then I figured I could build defensive Pokemon uh, or supportive Pokemon and defensive Pokemon to help support this thing, <laughs> uh, essentially. So that is why I went with Mewtwo. I am gonna speed this up, sorry, it take, has taken so long Long. Again, I am gonna, you know, you can skip to this. So, uh, but I really want to take my time and explain my thoughts to you because there was a lot of thought that went into this drafting process for sure. All right. So uh, round two went by, uh, or came back to me. Round one went down the list. Round two went back up. So there was a lot of picks that happened before I got to make my second pick. And uh, a, a lot of people had drafted their Gigantamax Pokemon. Um, and oh yeah, so I remember before, the Gigantamax Pokemon I originally wanted was G-Max Lapras. Again, both for to help Mewtwo and to help uh, Melmetal. I thought pairing a really powerful Pokemon that maybe needs some help on its defense would pair really well with G-Max Lapras. Because G-Max Lapras, if you don't know, I'm sure you do though, if you follow competitive Pokemon. Uh, can set up Aurora Veil, which is boosting both defenses for five to eight turns. So I really thought that could pair well. Originally, I thought it would work with Melmetal. When I didn't get Melmetal, I was like, all right, perfect. I can still grab uh, G-Max Lapras, and it'll pair really well with Mewtwo to get that thing behind some light screen uh, behind the Aurora Veil protection, and Mewtwo is going to be even harder to take down. Uh, means it sticks around longer and does more damage, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. Then, uh, my good friend Soy, Salamonster, coach of the Cuernavaca Cyndaquils, he snagged Lapras G-Max, literally the one pick before me. He is sixth, uh, he's eighth in the draft, so coming back up from the bottom, he got to pick one before me, and he sniped it right out from under me, so I really had to go back and be like, okay, what do I want in my Gigantamax Pokemon? After some thought and some consideration, uh, I was really looking at Grimmsnarl here because G-Max Grimmsnarl, um, 
isn't the best Gigantamax Pokemon on its own, but it is powerful. It um, it can take a lot of hits. Um, one of the big things about it is its G-Max move does put the Pokemon to sleep after one turn. Uh, it basically does the same thing as the move Yawn, putting the Pokemon to sleep the following turn after. Um, it is used, not the same turn. Um, but again, it does affect both Pokemon on the field uh, and is a secondary effect in addition to doing damage with its fairy type uh, G-Max attacks. The other thing is it resists both of what um, Mewtwo is weak to, which is primarily Dark and Ghost. So Grimmsnarl resists both Gar Ghost and Dark. It pairs really well with Mewtwo. The other thing Grimmsnarl can do is when it is not Gigantamaxed, it can set up both Light Screen and Reflect uh, with Prankster priority, meaning they always go first. So it can function as a support and as an offensive threat, um, which is kind of cool. That's a kind of a unique thing for G-Max uh, Pokemon that they don't always have that support role. Um, but Grimstone is really cool. I used it in ABL Season 3, so I'm familiar with it. Uh, if you watched those uh, last season, go check it out. Watch watch Grimstone put in some work. It's a really, really good support Pokemon. And I think as a G-Max, you know, having that a little bit more offensive potential of doing more damage and also bo boosting its HP stat. Um, is definitely going to be really, really cool. So I'm excited to use Grimstone. And again, it felt like a good solid round two pick because the G-Maxes were starting to go. I really wanted to get a good one. And I thought, again, it paired really well with my first pick, Mewtwo. All right, up next is round three. And I went ahead and picked Excadrill, which might be interesting. It doesn't really have uh, amazing synergy with my other two Pokemon. And that's because I really didn't know what to draft. And I really... I wanted a steel type and I thought it would be um, good to have a steel type on my team and this was really the one that I felt I just fit the best uh, with what was available in the S tier at the time. Again, I got sniped right before I picked. Tay Chi Chu went ahead and picked up Whimsicott, which I wanted for this team. I really wanted Whimsicott for the Tailwind Prankster support, uh, being able to make Grimmsnarl faster because it is pretty low in speed, and also making Mewtwo probably the fastest thing in the game um, if the opponent's not speed boosted by any reason or choice scarfed. The Tailwind Mewtwo outspeeds almost anything, uh, if not everything, in the game after a Prankster Tailwind, which I could guarantee I get up... Uh, before anything else, it would have paired really, really well with both Grimstyle and Mewtwo. Um, so I was very upset that I got sniped round three as well as I did round two. So again, I'm back to the drawing board. I was like, all right, we're picking up Excadrill. I don't really know what I'm doing with this draft at this point. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to pick up anything I think is powerful. Uh, and Excadrill covered the steel typing. I really wanted a good steel type to help deal with fairy types who I didn't have any resistance to yet. And... Yeah, that was pretty much my gist with Excadrill. I was hoping maybe I could pick up a Pokemon with sand, uh, sand, being able to set the sand later so that I could take advantage of Excadrill's ability, sand, um, sand Rush boosting its speed times two in the Sandstorm. So that was my thought process. But again, unless I get a Sandstorm Pokemon, it really isn't as good as it could be not utilizing all of its potential with its abilities is what I'll say. But we'll, we'll, you'll find out and you know if I got that throughout the rest of the draft. But it was definitely on my mind at this point to make sure I get a Sandstream Pokemon by the end of the game, by the end of the draft, excuse me. So that was really all my thoughts behind Excadrill. All right, next up is overall pick number four for me, not overall. Pick number four for me uh, was Indeedee Male. And I really wanted Indeedee Female over Indeedee Male, but unfortunately Indeedee Female was actually picked up in between uh, my Grim Snarl and my Excadrill pick. It was picked up, I think, two or three picks after Grim Snarl. So that's actually who I wanted for round three, but again, I had to pick Excadrill because um, Indeedee Female was gone. And I didn't go straight for Indeedee Male round three because I figured Indeedy male isn't as popular or maybe good traditionally as Indeedy female because of the fact that Indeedy female gets some better support moves like follow me. Uh, but Indeedy male is no joke. The main reason I wanted one of these two Pokemon is because they are the only Pokemon in Sword and Shield that has the ability Psychic Surge, which sets up the Psychic Terrain, which boosts Mewtwo's Psychic type attacks, as well as Indeedee Male. Uh, they both get the move Expanding Force, uh, which is a powerful spread Psychic type move uh, that I really wanted them to be able to take advantage of. But Indeedee Male does have some other supporting moves, which I do plan to take advantage of or try to. So it wasn't a bad backup to Indeedee Female, but once Indeedee Female was gone and I didn't get Indeedee Male round three and I went for the Excadrill, when 
when round four came around, I really didn't think I could risk letting Indeedee Mail go because I knew if I didn't draft it, it, it was my only opportunity to get Psychic Terrain, which was, again, back at the beginning in, in, in my thought process, um, one of the main reasons I drafted Mewtwo um, because of the fact that I knew you could pair it in doubles with uh, Psychic, uh, with Indeedee, and make it even more powerful and threatening. So... Happy with the Indeedy male, but not as happy as I would have been with female, basically. And that's that's why I picked it. All right. And next up, we have pick number five. And I went ahead and picked Gigalith. I got my Sand Setter. Uh, Gigalith is a rock-type Pokemon that can set the sand up with its natural ability. So it, it summons the Sandstorm when it switches into battle. Again, that pairs really well with Excadrill. Uh, this combination of Gigalith and Excadrill was used by Randy HLD Productions, who was a, a coach of a, uh, ABL Season 3. Uh, someone who I played against, um, I think just once, uh, maybe twice. I, I know I did have a victory against him, and I don't think I ended up playing him a second time, but he put in work with this team. I was lucky enough to have a good matchup against it in Season 3, but otherwise, it, it pretty, it really did a lot of damage to a lot of teams, uh, just because of how good it is, uh, both of these Pokemon, and especially when they're paired together. So at this point, I had gotten what I wanted as far as synergy goes with Mewtwo and Indeedee and Excadrill and Gigalith. Those were kind of the pairs of Pokemon I wanted, and then I all and I felt like they all um, you know worked well and they didn't hinder Grimmsnarl. They didn't particularly uh, uh, benefit Grimmsnarl, but Grimmsnarl benefits a lot of these Pokemon again if I choose to use it uh, more supportively uh, with Light Screen and Reflect. So that's why I went with Gigalith, though, was just to pretty much get the sand. Uh, there's some other things it can do, and I got some ideas how to use it besides just setting up the sand, because obviously you just set up the sand when you switch in, but then what four moves are you going to pick, and, and what kind of, you want to make it be, deal more damage. There is some cool stuff that I have planned for Gigalith, so stay tuned for that. Don't want to reveal all my secrets to all of my opponents for this season, but just know Gigalith is primarily there to set the sand, but I do have some things I want to try out with it throughout the season. Not sure when I'm going to pull it out. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for that. And that's why I went ahead and picked Gigalith for round uh, five. <clears throat> Next up is our round six pick. We went with Sigalith. Sigilith, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's a psychic flying type. I was really hesitant to get another psychic type, but I really wanted Tailwind support to be able to boost my speed, the speed of Mewtwo uh, and some of my other slower Pokemon. Again, Mewtwo and Grimmsnarl benefit from Tailwind. One of the things I knew early on that I wanted was Tailwind, uh, which again, I was going to draft round three, but Whimsicott got taken. And this was the uh, Tailwind setter I decided to go with. Um, to be completely honest, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep Sigalith. I might drop it for something else, but we can't make any transactions, um, um, free agent transactions until week one starts. So just stay tuned because after week one, going into week two, I might change up the team a little bit. I have some ideas, but I'll talk about that more once you guys have seen the other half of the draft. But this was my sixth pick literally for no other reason than Tailwind. And then I looked at its moveset and, you know, it gets Trick Room, it gets Light Screen and Reflect if I don't want to put those moves on Grimmsnarl, uh, but I really didn't like having another Psychic type, um, wasn't ideal. Um, so that's kind of why I'm hesitant on keeping it, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I haven't made any final decisions on what I'm keeping, what I'm not um, going into week uh, week two, because we can't make any transactions before week one. So this is what I'm going to be using for week one, but I can make change for week two, and I'll make sure to post on Twitter to keep you guys updated with any draft transactions that I make throughout the season. Next up is our round seven pick. I went with good old faithful Galvantula. Again, by, at this point, half of the draft, my draft was done. I had the the kind of combinations that I wanted, Pokemon that synergized with each other well as far as abilities and, you know, stuff like that is, um, was main kind of the main core of my team. And then I wanted to flesh out the rest of my team with stuff that either would just be good defensive or good offensive um, to help kind of patch up some of my team's weaknesses. One of my weaknesses was dark, um, and I didn't have anything that was really super effective against water either. So I, I went with Galvantula because again, it is fast. I like using fast Pokemon um, as well. You know, having fast offensive Pokemon is definitely the way I, I, I like, I play very aggressively and very offensively. So Galvantula fits that play style really well. If you watch me use it in season three, I almost exclusively ran choice specs uh, and was just pretty much clicking thunder or bug buzz and just doing insane amount of damage. Modest choice specs, bug buzz and thunder there's not much 
that really wants to take hits from it. Um, and that was kind of how I ran it in the past. There's definitely other stuff you could do with it, such as sticky webs for speed control. Uh, but it's just a solid offensive threat, that, and it's fast enough that everybody has to respect its speed and respect how much damage it can do, because it doesn't need any speed control to be faster than a lot of things in the uh, in the game. It's base 108 speed, uh, which means anything that's under that's 100 to 105, you know, anything in that speed range, 95 to 105. A lot of Pokemon tend to be that speed um, tier. So Gal Galvantula naturally outspeeding them and threatening them with a ton of damage um, is, is something that I think a lot of people slept on and weren't expecting Galvantula to perform as well as it did in Season 3. Um, but now people are going to be expecting it, so I'm going to have to use it m more creatively uh, because people know what it can do and specifically how I've used it in the past. So we'll see how Calvantula goes this season, but I needed an electric type, I needed a bug type, uh, and it covered again some of those weaknesses to dark um, and water that I had on my team. So it covered again, a, a, pretty much all my team was weak to either dark or water besides Grimmsnarl. Uh, Galvantula was a perfect like uh, plug to fill in that gap on my team. So that's for good reason I think I picked Galvantula. All right, <clears throat> so eighth overall pick on my draft. I went ahead and picked up Noivern for this round. I didn't have any dragon types, uh, and with the B tier, this was the, uh, clearly the best one. There really wasn't any good dragon types in that tier available. Looking over it again here, um, let's see, that was... Where's Noivern? Yeah, there, I don't think there was any other... Um, yeah, I don't think there was any other dragon types in that tier that I really wanted besides Flygon. It was pretty much between Flygon and Noivern. I, they're both four times weak to ice, but Noivern is faster. Also has the ability to set up Tailwind. So it's another option for Tailwind because um, I was realizing, I was thinking about it more. Again, I was worried about having too many Psychic types on my team if I wanted to have Mewtwo and Didi for the Psychic Terrain stuff and then Sigilyph for Speed Control. Like half my team would be weak to, um, to Dark. So I picked up Noivern for another Tailwind setter. Uh, it's also so again, it just threatens things being so fast that, it, again, it makes people have to really think about speed and either try to like set up Trick Room or it basically makes the opponent have to focus on speed control more uh, and maybe sacrificing some, you know, offense for more support in that sense. And, and again, it's got a great move. It's got a pretty decent move pool as far as Dragon Flying Stab, gets fire coverage, um, some other good coverage moves as well. At 123, it does outspeed quite a bit as well one of the faster Pokemon in the game. Uh, and I, my, my team was looking pretty speedy there. Um, or I picked, you know, Mewtwo is fast, Galvantula is fast, but the rest of my team was pretty slow. So I felt, uh, you know, kind of rebalance the scales a little bit. Let's go ahead and pick up Noivern for, for again, the speed control and speed tier uh, and and its dragon typing was the, the main thing that I was looking at Noivern for. Next up was our ninth pick, and you'll see it's not in order anymore, and it's under the category F. This was our free pick. We had to follow strictly, we had to draft one Pokemon from each of these tiers, well, 3B tier, 3C tier, 2A, 1S, as you can see on the screen, but that one free pick, meaning it could come from any of the other tiers except for the restricted. So I couldn't get another legendary like Mewtwo, uh, but I could have gotten another G-Max, I could have gotten another s tier mon, and that's what I did. Toxapex was an s tier mon. Uh, I wanted more defensive bulk on my team. Toxapex give me the defensive bulk. It gives me the poison and water typing, which I didn't previously have. Um, kind of wanted to work towards having that, uh, you know, a little bit more of a defensive, uh, some defensive strength on the team because a lot of my team right now is offensive and supportive. So I needed a solid defensive wall, which isn't as important in double battles, but it is still important to have some bulky Pokemon that can, and Toxapex can do some cool things as far as like re resetting stats with Haze. Um, again, just super bulky, can be super annoying, can be scalding uh, offensive Pokemon to burn uh, physical attackers. There's some cool stuff with Toxapex, and I thought it fit, the, um, it fit my team really well with what I had. And again, patched some of the weaknesses I was worried about. So, um, so that's pretty much it. Not really much else I can say about Toxapex here. Tenth pick overall for us here is our first Pokemon from the C tier, and there wasn't much that was very good down in that bottom tier. So I picked up Pangoro. I didn't have a fighting or a dark type Pokemon on my team. Uh, and I thought, again, I just wanted those typings. 
and I so I went ahead and picked it up. That's pretty much it. I wanted fighting a dark type. Um, again, helps me deal with ghost types and dark types as well. And I wasn't too wary. I didn't have a lot of fairy weaknesses, so I went ahead and picked it up uh, on the team. So yeah, not much else I can say about it. Uh, anything else I want to do with it is I'm not going to give away because it's a little bit too much of my strategy. But yeah, just know I picked Pangoro for some specific reasons with some things that it can do. <laughs> and mainly I liked its typing, uh, but it had some other things I was interested in in keeping secret and using throughout the season. Hopefully catching some maybe some people off guard uh, with some unique strategies. All right, on to the second to last pick. We went ahead and picked up Shinotic. I wanted this Pokemon for a couple reasons. I like the grass and fairy typing. It does get spore so I can put things to sleep. Again, helping with, it's a good supportive Pokemon. There's some other cool moves it, it, it gets here. Uh, I'm gonna actually uh, pull it up and look because there was, there was a couple things I was looking at that really intrigued me about it. Um, yeah, just Spore, um, Strength Sap, Dazzling Gleam, good spread moves, both Light Screen, uh, not Reflect, I, I think it just gets Light Screen, but overall, uh, Leech Seed, Stun Spore, uh, again, put stuff to sleep, Paralyze things, Leech Seed, Pollen Puff, uh, I, that was the big one, I actually got it for Pollen Puff is the move I was thinking of. If you don't know, uh, Pollen Puff... Uh, boosts your, gives HP back to your ally if you use it on uh, your ally Pokemon that's one of your own. If you use it on an opponent Pokemon though, it does not heal them. It actually does, uh, it's a 90 base power move. So it's a very powerful move against opponents and it's a great supporting move for your own team. So um, it, it's pretty much what Amoongus does, but it's a worse Amoongus because it doesn't get Rage Powder. Uh, so that's, I, I kind of wanted Amoongus at one point too, and I didn't get it. So I went ahead and, and, and grabbed Shinotic because I thought it was one of the best Pokemon in this lower tier in my opinion uh, there wasn't a lot great down there especially for my team uh, and it definitely definitely filled some niches of uh, strategies that I didn't have access to yet so that's pretty much it for Shinotic and here we go on to the final pick here is Heatmore I was struggling and we were at the bottom of the bottom of the barrel for this last round. I really had no idea what I wanted to pick. I didn't have a fire type and I really wanted a better fire type than Heatmore, but there was really, really nothing that stood out to me in this tier. The only other fire type was Rapidash and that got snagged for me. I really want, I actually wanted Rapidash instead. So I just picked it up because it's a fire type, but there's really nothing great to say about Heatmore. It is not a good Pokemon and I really don't know if I'm going to use it at all, uh, but I wanted it to have the option of using a fire type Pokemon so that's what uh, that's what we went with and again I'm record uh, so that's the draft you can see it right there um, I'm pretty happy with it again got access to a couple different strategies that uh, I can go for and I don't have to stick to those too there's a I can build a lot of cool teams with a lot of different strategies beyond that beyond what's obvious is what I'm hoping is that I can do some creative stuff, um, build some fun teams, take some people off guard. I really want to win this season. I was the overall highest uh, ranked team after the regular season of season three. I went on to playoffs. I lost round uh, first round of playoffs. Super bummed about that because of how good I did in the regular season. I really, really wanted a strong showing in playoffs. Um, but again, the pressure and the preparation was not 100%. For me, uh, I you know I wasn't 100% focused uh, on team building, or you know just really didn't have the perfect mindset going into those to to win. And my opponent brought some amazing Pokemon and sets, so I want to get my mind right and have a great season. That way, we can guarantee make it to playoffs and hopefully do really good at playoffs. But no matter what, I love this league. I love double battles. It's so fun to do both single battles in a different league that I'm in, the IBA, and double battles in the ABL. I get the best of both worlds. I get to play all different types of Pokemon competitively with people now that I consider my friends. So I'm incredibly lucky to be a part of this league. Thank you to everyone who watches the videos and supports me and the ABL. Thank you to the ABL for having me again. I hope to be back for as many seasons as I can. And again, hopefully bring home the trophy this season. So leave a comment down below if you are rooting for the Lansing Leafions this season season in ABL season four, make sure to check out the links down below to get your ABL merch, whether that's stickers, whether that's t-shirts, whatever you want. You got to get it. You got to do it. Subscribe to me if you're new. Leave a like in this video. Uh, and that's pretty much it.
Let me know if, what you guys think of the draft down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>